So we'll get right to it. The big story is the Boston Red Sox trade Mookie Betts and David Price to the Dodgers. The Dodgers send Alex Verdugo, an outfielder, the lefty hitting outfielder, to the Red Sox. They send Kenta Maeda to the Twins. And the Twins um, send a 103 mile an hour reliever who throws 103 miles an hour. Um, Russell Graterall is his name. And um, the Red Sox get two controllable players. Neither one of them add up to Mookie Betts. Now, obviously, there's outrage in Boston. Mookie Betts is one of the greatest players that the Red Sox farm system has ever produced. He's 27 years old. He has won an MVP two years ago. Last year, a little bit of a, um, a drop from his MVP season, but he still finished eighth in the MVP voting. And when Heim Bloom was hired to be the GM of the Red Sox, his marching orders were get under the threshold. Now, the only way he could get under the threshold would be to get rid of Price's entire contract. So three years, I think he has $96 million left. And no one was going to take that in its entirety. So he had to piggyback him onto a great asset. And the great asset that they did or used was Mookie Betts. So people in Boston are very upset. Now, Mookie Betts was due to earn $27 million this year. And then he's going to be a free agent at the end of the season. Now, the Red Sox, it's been leaked out, have offered Mookie Betts 10 years, $300 million. And he turned it down. And the reports are that he came back at $420 million for however many years. So they were $120 million apart. Now, the Red Sox are a very wealthy organization. Their average ticket prices are the highest in baseball. They make a truckload of money. They own Fenway Park. They own Nesson. So they're doing quite, quite well. John Henry is a billionaire in his own right. He's one of the major owners of the Red Sox. But what I've found out, and I can't sit here and be a hypocrite and destroy the Red Sox for wanting to get under the salary threshold when I certainly didn't do that when the Yankees spent a couple of years trying to get under the salary threshold. Because all you have to do, don't just look around sports. Look, the, look around the world. Look in business. Little secret. Rich people don't like paying taxes on anything. Because if you look at the totality of what the Red Sox pull in as an organization, if they had not traded bets and they had not traded price, and they're picking up half of price's salary anyway, I think they're... they're their tax that they would have paid for being over the threshold was $12 million. Chump change. But there's a lot of things that come with being over all the thresholds, which the Red Sox would be over. And they've been over the threshold for the longest time. They pay a lot of taxes. You lose draft position. You lose international signing bonus money. You lose a lot of things that help you build up the system. Now, one of the reasons that they got rid of Dave Dombrowski was he traded the, f the future for the present and got himself a World Series two years ago. And one of the reasons I believe that the Red Sox feel that they can do this is because they've given their fans three World Titles very recently and a World, S a World Series title two years ago. So John Henry made his money in analytics. Not in sports analytics, just analytics of the stock market. He probably looked at this and said, for the long term, we're not in good shape. They also probably analytically looked at Mookie Betts and said, 27 years old, slight build. He's already turned down $300 million, which was not a fair market offer. They, there's no way they were going to get him for $30 million a year. So I understand him turning that down. It makes him look like a bad guy, but there's no way he was going to take $30 million a year after what Mike Trout got, after what Garrett Cole got. They, they, he just wasn't going to. And they said, he could break down, might not be the same player. This is the number, the evaluation that we put on him, and we're not going to go over it. And that's not going to get it done. So if they had tried to win this year, and the way the Yankees are built, would the Red Sox be better than the Yankees? Probably not. So the way we're built now, are we going to win? No. We're also probably not going to re-sign this guy when he becomes a free agent. So we'll offer him the qualifying offer, which will give us a 
a fifth round draft pick essentially. Nothing that really moves the needle. Here they got Alex Verdugo, who's certainly not the top prospect for the uh, Dodgers, but he's one of the better young players in baseball and saw a lot of major league time last year. And the kid greater all from the, uh, the Twins who throws 103 miles an hour. There's debate on whether or not he's a starter or a reliever. So I understand what the Red Sox did. It does make them look cheap because the average Joe can't understand why would a billionaire care about paying these taxes. But again, rich people do everything in their power to avoid paying taxes. They just do. They have offshore companies. Whatever. They don't want to pay taxes. They don't think it's fair to pay taxes. All of us pay taxes. Really rich people don't pay as much taxes as, that, as you would think that they would. So taxes bother them, and he wanted to get under the threshold and also set his organization up for the future. And that's why I brought a guy in from the Tampa Bay Rays, Heim Bloom. They're going to build a mean, lean team that's going to be competitive and not have to be over the threshold all the time. Now, here's the one variable, Don. When the Yankees were getting under the threshold, they didn't lose any of their players to get under the threshold. They chose not to pursue players. They chose not to get a Justin Verlander. They chose not to go into the free agent market. They went with their young players. And the fact that their young players were so good, it made them competitive, and it didn't make them look as bad for going under the threshold. But this would be like if the Yankees are trying to get under the threshold and they let Aaron Judge get away. This is a bad optic for the Red Sox, which is going to be hard for them to explain to their fan base because Mookie Betts is the most popular Red Sox player. And you let him go, and in the fans' mind, you let him go simply for money. I think it's a deeper dive that you have to make. I think they let him go for the future. They let him go to restock their farm system. They let him go to get better two years, three years down the line, rather than make what would be a long shot attempt to win this year. But also, we don't know what's going to happen to them this year because they're still investigating the 2018 team. And they probably know what's going to happen. So there may be sanctions that come down that would have made it difficult for them to be able to compete now anyway. Hein Bloom is their general manager because they want to rebuild. That's why the Mets didn't hire him because the Mets didn't want to rebuild. But we've seen this act from the Red Sox before, where they strip it down only to come back and win. That's what kind of is, I don't want to call it hypocritical, but we talk about how cheap they want to be and they want to kind of get under. But meanwhile, if they go ahead and lose 100 games this year, they'll be panic and they'll probably spend a bunch of money to go out there and win in 2021. That's what happened in 2013, right? They bottomed out with Bobby Valentine in 2012. They regrouped. They won the championship in 2013. And they used the Dodgers to get... Rid of all that bad right. money with Adrian Gonzalez, that big trick. But, you know, whether it's going out and getting J.D. Martinez or whoever, they will put themselves in a situation that the money they're not spending now, they may be forced to spend in 21-22 because of how bad they'll be during the rebuild. The Yankees have been able to hit the reset button and still be competitive. And as you said, not get rid of any core players in the process. They just stop pursuing them, get underneath the threshold, and then go back at it again. The Red Sox strip it down to build it back up again. It's almost a modern-day Florida Marlins, if you remember, where they win the championship, then everybody goes. Win a championship game, everybody goes. That's what the Red Sox are going to end up doing, Michael. Yeah, they'll hit the reset button, but don't you see them spending big money in a couple of years again anyway? That's what they've done. That's been their M.O. So I don't know exactly what's going to happen in the future. I wasn't expecting them to be that competitive in 2020. Going into the season, I thought the Red, the Yankees' biggest concern was going to be the Tampa Rays. So this deal does not surprise me, but what I do think it does is set up the Red Sox to possibly be a force in another couple of years. And there's a lot of people that are angry at bets for being greedy, and I, I, I don't think that's fair. When you get this close to free agency, you want to see what the open market is going to uh, give you. And I, I think it's going to give them a lot more than $300 million for 10 years. So all of us, the, the average Joes that actually go to the games and root for the teams, we can't even fathom turning down $30 million a year. But they're playing on a different level than we are. The, their mindset is different than our mindset is. They are not married to that uniform. You are as a fan. And Mookie Betts has never, ever articulated any displeasure about playing in Boston. He liked playing in Boston, didn't say there's no way I'm signing here. He wanted to be a free agent. And he figured Mike Trout got all that money and was two years away from free agency. If I become a free agent, this is not going to be as good a free agent market as last year. I'm going to be the one. I'm going to be 28 years old. I'm going to be chased. 
I'm going to be given a lot more right. money than $30 million a year. And he has every right to feel that way. I don't think anybody should be upset at Mookie Betts. I understand Red Sox fans being upset at the Red Sox because they pay top dollar to go in there. But I also understand the Red Sox thinking, we're not winning with Mookie Betts. We don't think that we're going to be able to sign him. We don't value him at $420 hey. million. We have to draw a line in the analytic sand. And although he's a great player, we see that there could be some deterioration. Well, and this isn't like Cano leaving to go to Seattle, where he was leaving a great situation, going to a bad situation because he wanted to get his 10-year contract. Betts played it right. He's won a championship in Boston already. All right? Now he's got a chance to win in L.A., and then he gets his pick of teams as a free agent. So it's not like he's going from a great situation to a bad situation just because he wants to get paid. He's actually going and improving his chances to win a championship in L.A., and then he gets to be a free agent for the first time in his career and be able to pick the team he wants to play for at the money that he wants. So why is that a bad thing? I understand a Red Sox fan being upset that he's gone, but you don't think that he did the right thing for himself? And for from, from a baseball standpoint and a financial standpoint, this is the best of, of both worlds for him. Uh, the only thing that really it interests me about this particularly is where the fans land on it. You know, does does anyone care anymore? Uh, you would think, I know the Red Sox have had their, their share of feasting, not a lot of famine these days in Boston, but I would still think you're a kid, you know, you're 15 years old, whatever, you, you're a Red Sox fan, aren't you kind of in love with Mookie Betts? Yeah. Isn't he really, I mean... And Andrew and I were discussing this. Does it still matter in baseball? I mean, Harper left the Nationals. Nationals go on to win the World Series. Machado goes to San Diego. They win 70 games. So maybe it's not everything. I mean, and as I said to Andrew, you're even seeing Toronto right now in, in basketball. You thought the whole thing was Kawhi Leonard. They seem to be just as good. So, but I wonder if you're a fan, and I know we have a lot of Red Sox fans in the city listening to the show. Isn't there just a little bit of heartbreak? Because correct me if I'm wrong, Michael, isn't Betts just the kind of guy you love to root for he's, and have on your team? He's the most popular Red Sox. He is. Kids love him. He's got the perfect name that kids love, Mookie. And uh, I'm telling you, it's, it's going to be tough. But again, I think it's a long-term thinking play by John Henry and the ownership. It makes them look cheap because they've had a very slow offseason. And this also is a clarion call to every organization out there when you change management. What you do is you change philosophy. So last year they had Dave Dombrowski, who was a spend and trade guy. I'm going to spend the money. I'm going to try to win. I'll worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. So they inked Chris Sale to this ridiculous contract. What do they need Chris Sale now for? He's unmovable. Nathan Navaldi, who we're going to talk to on Friday when we go to the Connecticut Cancer Foundation dinner uh, at uh, Mohegan Sun. Um, why did you need Nathan Navaldi? If you were going to hit reset, why would you make those signings? And then they change over to a guy, highly analytical, who's not going to spend the money that, um, that Dombrowski spent. And you can see that is a change of philosophy because John Henry probably looks over at the Yankees and see how they've transitioned. Now, they still spend a lot of money, and the Red Sox still oh. will spend a lot of money, but the Yankees are not going to have a $300 million payroll with a highly analytic front office. But Chris Sale's 30, Nathan Evaldi's 29. Right. Betts is your best everyday player, and he's 25? 27. 27? Mm -hmm. I don't know. It just seems backwards, right? Wouldn't it seem like the person you'd probably stick to ride this thing out would be Mookie Betts? Like, they can't, they, they can't trade those guys. Those guys are untradeable. They're, they're untradeable no matter what. With the money that they're being, you know, they, they had to decide, who do we piggyback on top of Betts? Because they probably thought to themselves, we can't sign Betts. We don't, we are not, now obviously they can afford anybody they want. That's how rich they are. But we don't value him at the number that he's going to get on the free agent market. So let's get rid of him and get more than a fifth-round draft pick hey. compensation and get a real good player in Verdugo and a great arm and greater role. Well, let's just spin this out locally, okay? The New York Yankees sit there as the best team in the American League. One of their closest competitors, the Boston Red Sox, have hit the reset button. Mm -hmm. The Rays don't have any money really to improve their team. Baltimore is awful. Toronto is getting better, younger, but I don't think they're close yet. Twins are great. All right? Twins are great. Can't beat the Yankees on a bet. Houston's great, but they've just lost their manager. And their best pitcher. And their best pitcher. Oh, and by the way, a manager that I like, but still hasn't proved he can win big games in the postseason. The Cleveland Indians are trying to be trade their best player. Well, although Terry said they're not on the show. I know, show. But, but it's all you hear, okay? Right. So you're sitting, the Yankees are in great shape. 
I mean, the Yankees, Yankees have their players, they have the wherewithal, and all of their competition has taken major hits or are at a major disadvantage. I think the Rays are good. I think the Rays are the second best team, and they could be a threat to the Yankees. But are they going to be able to add at the trading deadline? Are they going to be able to improve themselves other than through their farm system? The answer is no, because they're not a big market team. And Minnesota, when push comes to shove, is not a big market team. And again, until they show me, where are the Twins ever a threat? How many different players, different managers, different organizations, different buildings have they had? And then they play the Yankees in a big spot and cannot beat them. Where's the threat? Where's the threat in the American League, Michael? Well, I think the Yankees are the best, but I think they can happen in a short series. And the Twins are very good. And, and just because of their past history that they've never beaten them before, the Twins have gotten better. After winning 100 games last year, Josh Donaldson, they, they, their offense is, is really stout, and they made their pitching better. They did. Now, is their pitching great? No, no we'll but it's see. better. But still, I, th I think the Angels have improved. Right. It's still not they a team. They picked up Jock Peterson last night, too, from the Dodgers. It's still not a team in your division, all right? And they still have a lot to prove that it's a team that is going to be a big-time threat to you in the postseason. And the Yankees will have that home field advantage and be the best team in the American League. And you're right. Anything can happen in a short series, especially a five-game series. And who knows what happens in the World Series? Because everybody thought the Astros were going to win and the Nationals took care of business. And the Dodgers looked like they could be a force. But right now, you were excited about the Yankees two years ago when they got Stanton. You were excited about the Yankees last year because they were coming off a 100-win season. You should be really fired up right now. Not that the Red Sox were a threat, but the Red Sox might go away here for a little while. 